Hi, I'm Deborah Bella, and um, I'm the author of the Ghost Club series. That's my latest series, and um, I wanted to read today just a tiny bit of my latest book, which is called A Transylvanian Tale. Um, and the reason I wrote this series is because I'm fascinated with ghosts, and my nana, when I was young, used to t used to tell me ghost stories. But more than that, I discovered that Charles Dickens, the wonderful, brilliant, lovely author Charles Dickens, believed in ghosts and he actually set up a very real ghost club 151 years ago and it still exists today and they go out to places where people say there are kind of strange bumps in the night. Now I'm the world's biggest coward so um, I wanted to write a ghost club story that wasn't also really spooky and really scary because I'm too much of a scaredy cat so mine's kind of filled with more pesky ghosts, more kind of naughty ghosts um, uh, getting up to naughty stuff. So um, I'm going to read you a little bit of the third book in the series uh, of the ghost club called A Transylvanian Tale. So this is chapter one, A Particularly Pesky Ghost. You're not getting away that easily. Angeline fixed her sights on the faint red glow of the ghost that had appeared on the screen of her tracker. She and Edgar had been following this particular pest for days, and once again it was almost in their grasp. She stepped carefully and quickly over the damp forest floor, which was twisted with roots and choked with the musty decay of leaves. Swirls of mist caught in her torchlight, creeping from between the trees and circling her ankles like snakes. She knew she shouldn't be here on her own. When she first spied the ghost, she should have hurried to Edgar's room and told him what she'd seen. He would have grabbed his ghost coat and satchel, like she had, and raced from the stone fortress to attempt the ghost catching together. Only the most experienced ghost club members were allowed to go out on a catch alone, and even then, they often went with a partner. It was safer that way. You could never tell just how much trouble your ghost was going to cause, and two pairs of eyes were always better when ghosts were at their most pesky. But tonight she had little time to act, so act she did. Angeline held her tracker before her. The deep red glow of a ghost was still on her screen, hidden in the thick fog, just out of sight. She hurried on, treading as delicately as her boots would allow. She briefly glanced up when the toe of her boot caught under a knotted root and she stumbled forward. Flinging her hands out to break her fall, her torch and tracker flew from her grip. Angeline fell hard, looking up just in time to see her torch land in the mud and her tracker strike against a boulder with a sickening crack. She scrambled forward, whispering, no, please, not now. The display panel was shattered. The red glow was gone. She really shouldn't have gone on a catch without a partner. She knelt on the ground, mud splattering her face and soaking into her jeans. The forest was now thick with fog. Without her tracker, she had no chance of knowing where she was, and even less of finding her way back. She had two options. Give up and again let this ghost get away, or keep going and try and catch it. She sighed, and she knew the sensible thing to do. But she also knew that this ghost was getting to be a real pain, and it was time someone did something about it. She grabbed her muddy torch, got to her feet, and took her ghost goggles from her satchel. She slipped them on and searched the long shadows and narrow corridors between the trees, hoping they would reveal a ghostly red glow. Nothing. Where are you, she wondered aloud. Now that she'd stopped, the forest seemed alive with sounds, creaking branches, scuttling through the undergrowth and sniffing behind the trees. She even thought she heard the soft wheezing of someone behind her. She spun round, her torch blazing, but there was no one there. By now the forest had lost the last touches of moonlight and it was plunged into a thick, syrupy darkness. She searched for the way back, but each gap between the trees looked the same. The leaves swayed above her and a creeping cold ate into her bones, which is when she saw the flashing light, like a signal beaconing her forward. She inched slowly closer. The light continued to flash, only now it was faster and more insistent. Her goggles detected no supernatural activity, so she had to be careful. Ghosts she could deal with. Humans and animals were another issue altogether. The crack of a branch was all she heard before her body was slammed to the ground. Her breath was snatched from her chest and she struggled to get it back beneath the suffocating fur pressed against her face. She tried to force her attacker off, 
pushed with all her strength, but it was too heavy, too determined that she had taken her last breath. Angeline! It was Edgar. He'd come for her. Where are you? Here. She tried to cry, but her voice was muffled, caught beneath the fur. I'm over here. Angeline! It was no use. She wasn't strong enough. She'd never be able to... At a time of great invention, a secret club was in creation, which began an operation of ghost investigation. A hundred and fifty years later, in the spookiest places known, the youngest members of the club catch scary stuff that's in your home. In churches, castles, mansions, garden sheds, and even schools, Angeline and Edgar Usher track down the ghosts and ghouls. So never fear, ghost clubs here to keep you safe and sound, catching paranormal pests wherever they are found.